Dr. Patty, she's a communications expert and consults individuals and businesses on communication strategies. Dr. Patty also teaches at Cal State Fullerton. Dr. Patty, thanks for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Well, today we've been talking about living your passion. During the break, we talked about a couple of different things. One of the things we talked about is uh, you. It's talking about right. you versus I. Yes. It's always good to take responsibility for your feelings and not to blame it on somebody else. And sometimes, especially when we're having poor communication or things are escalating, it's very easy to fall into that, well, you did this, you always do that, you made me feel. Well, nobody makes us feel anything. We make ourselves feel. So we don't want to be <laughs> blaming other people. We want to take responsibility. And in communication, the best way to do that is by making I statements. I feel hurt. I feel angry. Not you made me angry. Or not that I feel hurt because you made exactly. me angry. <laughs> exactly. Because that's the same thing that's still doing that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Just it, a clever way of putting it. Right. <laughs> you know, one of the things that's interesting is how valuable this could be if you work with a boss. Because if you make you statements, you're attacking your boss. Yeah, that's you don't how want your to boss do that. Is, no, not a good thing. <laughs> no. However, if you're making I statements, like, for instance, I'm feeling like my work is not producing the results we really want. I'm feeling frustrated that the project is behind schedule. I'm feeling yes. like less than uh, uh, you know, less than valued because you just moved my desk into the little closet in the corner. <laughs> Whatever right. it is, it's a it's a better way of communicating, particularly if you're having to communicate up the up the ladder of command. That's right. And if you do make a statement like that, the best thing to do next is be quiet. Stop talking, give them a chance to process it and respond. And that ties right into interpretation. Absolutely. You've got to watch the interpretation. That's what prompts those knee-jerk reactions. Somebody says something, and we misinterpret it. We think, that guy's a jerk, or that person has it in for me. But we don't know that. We don't know if they just had some disaster happen at home or, or something else on the job. So we shouldn't just automatically assume that it's aimed at us and take it personally. We need to reinterpret that. We have no control over how that person is communicating, but we do have control over how we're responding and communicating. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this person is just having a bad day. Maybe now's not a good time to talk well, about it. You know what, Scott, you... I, I told you it was just I was having a bad day. Well, one of the things that I like to do is when somebody is coming across aggressive, I like to ask them, are, are you having a bad day or are you upset about something that I did? And they'll, then they'll say, well, no, I, I, I'm sorry, this and this happened or I'm having a personal issue. But I give them an opportunity to respond, yeah. but I have no problem asking. I know that there are certain people that have a problem asking, are, you know, yeah. are you upset? Are you having a bad day or what's going on? And it's really important to ask questions. That's one of the things about how we can communicate clearly and make sure that we're really understanding what the other person means to get what they're saying. We need to ask questions, especially for clarification, and to find out what the other person's thinking so we don't misinterpret what's going on. We need to get inside their heads, and we can only do that by asking them. Very, oh, I love that. Very, 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 very important. The other thing is, is um, tone of voice. Yes. Yeah. How things are said, not just the content of what's said, but the way people say it. We want to make sure, too, that our body language and what we're saying is congruent, that they match. How confusing is it when we're sending mixed messages? If somebody says, well, they're acting kind of like silent, they're not talking to you, and you say, well, is there anything wrong? And they're like, no. And they've got their arms crossed and they're frowning. It's, what? What does that mean? It's, we want to make sure that we match, that we're congruent. So is that we're expressing non-verbally what we're saying verbally so mm -hmm. people aren't confused. And so what if the person who is receiving that aggression and they don't like conflict, what can they do? The person who doesn't like conflict? Yes. Like, I think most people don't really like conflict per se. I think the thing, the key is to reinterpret it. Again, to not take everything as a conflict or as a personal attack. Sometimes conflict can actually be very productive. It doesn't have to be destructive. You can build stronger relationships with conflict. You can come up with better solutions to problems 
in organizations. You can do better decision making. If you've got people who are conflicting and debating different ideas, it can be a positive thing. You know, one yeah. thing that's interesting is a technique that uh, I have learned many, many years ago, and that is if somebody's really upset and they're like yelling at you and you're not like in the boat with them being upset, they're mm-hmm. just like really bent out of shape or whatever it is. Sometimes it helps to simply repeat back to them what they're saying so uh-huh. that they know they're being listened to. Right. And I don't mean like mimic them. Like, no. Rah, rah, rah. I'm talking about you actually repeat the content of the message mm-hmm. in such a way that they understood. I had a, when I worked at another company a gazillion years ago. This guy was so angry. He was taking these big, heavy 50 pound boards and just tossing them up on the loading dock. And I was, you know, he was yelling at people and everybody was like running away from him. And I walked up to him and I said, what's going on? He started yelling at me and I started repeating what he was saying. Then he started to slow down and he said it again and I repeated it and he slowed down a little more. And then he finally just finally told me exactly what was going on. So I went and I got the 39 cent part that he needed. I handed it to him and I said, it's on the house. Sorry that you had such a uh, bad day. Did you need more help loading these boards back into your van? And he goes, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so he calmed down. That's good. Yeah, and he was just really, he really got frustrated that he couldn't get the message out there. He didn't know what he needed, but he knew that there was something missing, and it turned out to be this little piece, this little part that was like no big deal. Yeah. So sometimes, sometimes if we repeat what people are saying to us so they can hear that they've been heard, that helps. Mm-hmm. And this is also true when you're setting your goals. For instance, if I'm talking with Lorraine, she and I were actually talking. It was a dialogue. So I repeated what she was saying. She was repeating what I was saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we think about when we're having good communication, what goes on, that's really instructive of those kinds of communications that we want to create around our goals. Yes. Yes, it definitely is. It's active listening. When you're participating in it, it's not passive listening where you're just sitting there taking in information or somebody's machine gunning information at you. You're participating in it, making sure that you're on the same page, you're understanding each other, and you especially want that with the goal setting. And you know what? Somebody who is in a supervisory role, I always say, you know, ask the person, do you understand um, the, you, you know the the project, and please explain it to me how you understand it, yes. and explain it back. And in your example, where they didn't, you know, it cost them three hundred million dollars that mistake. If they would have repeated it back, that wouldn't have happened. Right, that's right, and that's a very good technique, especially if you're giving instructions or training somebody to make sure. Because a lot of times people just nod and say, "Yeah, yeah, I got it," and they really didn't. And that's a good way to be accountable, hold them accountable. That's the smart money, that. smart money uh, rule, definitely. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, uh, so you've got listeners that are listening all across the country, business owners. They're thinking, hey, I, I need to improve the communication channels in my business. How can you help them? Well, I can, I can help them by assessing what the problem is, first discussing with them via either over online or on the phone, what the issue is, how they perceive the problem, what they would like to see the end result be, and then we can do an assessment to zero in on exactly where the breakdowns are, where the miscommunications are, where the communication failures are, and then come up with a plan to correct those. Great. And how can people, how can people learn more and contact you? Well, they can go to my website, which is www drpattymalone.com. However, the doctor's not spelled out, so it's actually D-R-P-A-T-T-Y-M-A-L-O-N-E.com. Great. Dr. Patty, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, great. Dr. Patty. And, uh, you know, Scott, it's real simple. Our communication issues are all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just wanted to be real clear about that. Blame Mighty Mouse. I see how that's it. Oh, now it's Mighty Mouse. Are you going to get a Wall Street Journal in that name, too? Oh, that's next. Thank you for listening to Smart Money Talk Radio. Right 